chapter 11. I'll be reading verses 28 and 30. The title of this morning's message is Jesus invites you, us, to come. Verse 28 to 30 says, Come unto me, all you who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Have you ever noticed that burdens seem to multiply? I've used this illustration a few times, and I've looked for a couple of hours to find a better one, but I can't. So I'm going to share this with you. If you've heard it before, bear with me. If you haven't, this is what I'm talking about when I say burdens seem to multiply. This is an insurance letter. I'm writing this letter in response to your request for additional information in Block 3 of the accident reporting form. I quote poor planning, unquote, as a result of my accidents. You said your letter that I should explain more fully and trust that the following details will be sufficient. I am a bricklayer by trade, so on the day of the accident I was working alone on the roof of a six-story building. When I completed my work, I discovered that I had 500 pounds of bricks left over. Rather than carry the bricks down by hand, I decided to lower them in a barrel using a pulley, which fortunately was attached to the side of the building at the sixth floor. Securing the rope on the ground level, I went to the top of the roof, swung the barrel out, and loaded the barrel with the bricks. Then I went back to the ground and untied the rope, holding it tightly as to ensure a slow descent of the 500 pounds of brick. You will note that in block 11 of the accident reporting form that I weigh 135 pounds. Due to the surprise of being jerked off the ground so suddenly, I lost my presence of mind and forgot to let go of the rope. Needless to say, I have proceeded rather, at a rather rapid rate up the side of the building. In the vicinity of the third floor, I met the barrel coming down. This explains my fractured skull and broken collarbone. Slowing me only slightly, I continued a rapid ascent and not stopping until the fingers of my right hand and knuckles were deep into the pulley. Fortunately, by this time, I had regained my presence of mind and was able to hold tightly to the rope in spite of my pain. At approximately the same time, however, a barrel of bricks hit the ground. And the bottom fell out of the barrel. The void of its weight of bricks, the barrel, now lighter than my approximately 135 pounds, As you might imagine, I began to ascend, descend rapidly down the side of the building. In the vicinity of the third floor, I met the barrel coming up. This account with my two fractured ankles and the laceration of my left leg and lower body. The encounter with the barrel slowed me only enough to lessen my injuries when I fell into the pile of bricks. Fortunately, only three vertebrae were cracked. I am sorry to report, however, that as I lay there on the bricks, in pain, unable to stand, watching an empty barrel six stories above me, I lost my presence of mind and let go of the rope. Mm. How often have we kind of experienced one calamity after another, one burden after another that comes against us, one situation that arises over us that would again and again, it occurs. It happens that way in life, that problems never seem to be enough, and they seem to get bigger and bigger. Burdens seem to get heavier and heavier. If you're from Rhode Island, you understand that people, and I don't know if it's, it's uh, old wives' tale or superstition, but I've heard all my life, things always happen in three. 
know, so somebody happens, somebody gets hurt, everybody's looking for death, you know. I'm like, what's the matter with you? I break that in the name of Jesus. I don't accept those kinds of things. But the bottom line is, life seems to do that to us. One thing happens after another. And is it is it just one more thing I cannot carry? I want to say something that's not in my message, and then I'm going to go on in a minute, but I want you to hear this. One of the things I want you to understand, listen to me. I, If I ask for a raise, uh, show of hands, I will bet you that probably everybody in the room would raise their hands and say, I have weights. I have burdens. I'm weary. If, you do, if you're not, bless the Lord. But the majority of us are experiencing that. But I, what I want you to understand is there's a promise in Scripture, and you need, you need to grab a hold of this one. No matter what you're facing and no matter what you're going through, God promises that He will not allow you to be tried, tempted, or burdened more than you are your ability to handle or without providing you a means of escape. He promises that. Now what I want you to understand is when we carry those heavy burdens and weight, we feel overwhelmed. Our back is breaking, our legs grow tired, our fingers are caught in the pulley. But God has promised that if you come unto Him, you will not suffer defeat. The burdens that life sends your way will not overcome you. He will strengthen you. He will encourage you. He will carry you if necessary. In this particular chapter, in these verses. Before we get to the verses, I'm going to give you just a little bit of background. During the ministry of Jesus, he has, up to this point in Scripture, he has produced many miracles, signs and wonders. His message has been directly targeted to the nation of Israel as God's restored kingdom. His message had been kingdom-minded. Earlier in this book, he went from city to city, town to town, hamlet to hamlet, to either be accepted or rejected by those who heard him. In verse 20 of this chapter, he begins to upbraid them. Now I want you to understand something. Upbraid means to shame or to reproach. And I, I share this because what you need to understand is what Jesus now is pointing out before we get to these verses of what's going on. He began to upbraid them in most of the words down there. He said, if he didn't repent, woe unto you. It'd be better for Tyre and Zidon. And in those passages, he just began to speak and this reproach against them because they didn't believe the message. He felt he needed to approach the nation of Israel. He needed the cities of that area, just as sometimes we may need it today in our nation. The cry for repentance, the acceptance of the personal plea of the Lord Jesus Christ to bring us to discipleship. As an individual and as a nation, we can experience revival. But what happens even more than that is, while Jesus, in this chapter, is speaking to the nation, more than anything, he wants individuals to turn to him. And in this passage, I'd like to take a few moments and look at this offer. Jesus invites you to come. Charlie Brown said it this way. There's no problem so big, I can't run away from it. That's not the way God has planned it. We're not supposed to run away from our problems. We're not supposed to kick them down the road till another time. God has promised that we can accomplish anything in Him. Greater is He that is in us than He that is in the world. Anything the world has to send our way, He is capable of delivering us from, seeing us through, or giving us the victory over it. It's that simple. Now, it sounds simple, 
But if I ask right now, how many agree with me that it's simple, I'm probably going to get stoned. Because it really isn't simple. But he says, my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Are you weary and burdened this morning? Hear his voice. <laughs> Hear his voice this morning. His voice says, come. Come unto me, all you who are weary and heavy burdened. I would easily look at it and say, to one degree or another, we can all say yes to that. Some are struggling with guilt, sins of the past that you haven't forgiven yourself <laughs> for. Maybe you can't even believe that God can forgive you for them either. Some of you are struggling with sin, to, just to conquer it. It becomes an unbearable burden. Some are struggling with religious expectations. You want to be good Christian, but evangel, it just seemed to be too much. In a Christian life, there is a high standard of expectation, holiness, and it may have become a burden to you. That's not God's plan, but that might be where you are right now. Some are struggling with a burden of life and hectic schedule. So many people, so many things to do. So many people pulling for your attention and your time. So many things you need to get done. So many demands. It's just there. We've got home responsibilities, family responsibilities, work responsibilities, church responsibilities. Some are struggling with the burden of a failing relationship. Your marriage isn't working out the way it should. Your children are rebelling. Your relationship becomes strained and difficult to ma maintain. There are other burdens we carry, health problems, financial problems, emotional problems, and on and on. If you're struggling <sighs> through life with some kind, any kind of burdens, Jesus is offering. He wants to lift those burdens. He wants to give you a way out of those situations. But I want you to understand, the first thing he says is, come. The answer is available for you. The help that you need, the rest that you desire, the strength that needs to come your way is there. But, you need to come to Jesus. Now, many people believe that coming to Jesus, and this is true, but there's more to it, is to recognize we've sinned, apply the blood of Jesus to our lives, Asking for forgiveness. And that's absolutely true. That's coming to Jesus. But that's the first step. If I ask you, if you've come to Jesus, I, I looking out in the room, I'd probably say everybody's going to raise their hand this morning. Just about. But if I ask you, if you're weary, and you're running down, just about everybody would <laughs> raise their hands to that too. So it's more than just coming to him for salvation. It's coming to him day in and day out with the burdens, with the struggles 
with the weariness that you face every single day. Come unto me, all you who are weary and heavy burden, and I will give you rest. Are you weary and burdened? Accept his offer this morning. Matthew 11, 28 and 30 sounds nothing like your typical description of religious life. Jesus doesn't speak of backbreaking work, strict discipline, impossible demands. He says, this is what I have to offer you. This is what I want. First and foremost, he says, I will give you rest. That word in the Greek is anaposium, and it means literally an intermission or a vacation. Jesus saying, I will give you a break, an intermission, a, a halting of the day-to-day -day struggles that you face. I'll give you a second wind. He never promised us the life without difficulty. He never promised us that struggles wouldn't come our way. But what he does say is, be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. In the world you'll find tribulations, but I have overcome the world. <clears throat> if you look at the life of the disciples, they struggled a great deal to follow Christ. They, they were martyred and beaten. But while Jesus didn't promise an easy life, he promised a good life, that we would have life and have it more abundantly. And he promised peace in the midst of the storm. John 16, 33 simply says, I have told you these things, that in you you might have peace. In the world you will have trouble, but take heart, I have overcome the world. Jesus offers you rest. Okay. He goes on to say, I am gentle in heart. And humble. More often than not, the world sees Jesus, and, and many Christians see him not as a humble heart and gentle, but a tyrant. The things we cannot do, the things we must do, the things we need to change. And when I see that, and when I embrace and hear those kinds of things, I am brokenhearted. Because the Lord Jesus is not a harsh taskmaster. He's not a tyrant. He's gentle and a humble heart. Listen to Isaiah. A bruised reed he will not break. A smoldering wick he will not snuff out. What that really is saying is, a bruised reed is a, a branch that's been broken pretty much, it's almost completely broken. But there's a little bit connected. And as long as it stays connected, there's a pop, there's a chance for restoration. There's a chance it can regrow, they'll reconnect. A smoldering flat. Smoldering wick, I will not extend this. That literally means that the oil is so gone that there's no flame coming out left. All there is is smoke. He says, I won't put it out. If I had to use one word to describe how the Lord will deal with us and does, I would say tender. He brings us to that place. Because he's gentle and meek. He said to us, my yoke is easy. Now, there's two things that I, I want you to understand there. 
First, a yoke is a farming tool. That instrument, it binds an <coughs> ox into an ox into a plow, and it's hard demanding work. But what Jesus promises is that his yoke, his work, is not grueling or backbreaking, it makes it easy. And here's what's difficult and easy at the same time. The yoke of the Lord, what God wants for us is to only believe. He doesn't need us to do any great works. He doesn't need us to win thousands of souls. He doesn't need us to lead the greatest choir. He doesn't need us to do the most labor for the Lord. He doesn't need us any of those things. What he needs us, his yoke is simply faith. If we believe, all things are possible. Now that's not always a, 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 an easy situation. That's sometimes one of the most difficult things to do in life because we're burdened. Life sends us some curveballs. All kinds of things happen to us that we do not understand. But his yoke is easy. His burden is light. How can that be possible? All we need to do is believe. Well, understand what it means. First, he said, if we believe, all things are possible. Anything that we ask of the Father in faith, believing in his name, he will give it to us. The problem for us oftentimes is we need it too quickly. We don't see the answer to that. We're not willing to wait. For years, I, I believed God for, to cover my finances and take care of the needs of my home and family. And for years, when things didn't happen as quickly as I had wanted, I got another job. And then I gave God the glory for another job. And I gave God the glory for the strength and the fortitude to get the other job done. Now, looking back on those years, I will tell you that most likely, I was carrying my own yoke, not his. Sometimes we're brought to a place where we don't have anything left, whether it's finances, whether it's health, whether it's family, friends, we just don't have anything. And we're brought to that place because more often than not, when we come to the end of ourselves, that's where faith begins. It's sad. Faith should be the first step. But that yoke of faith and belief, is more often than not as individuals, we need to come to the end of ourselves. We talked about the woman of the issue of blood last week. She had done everything she could humanly do possible. Everything. All her money, every doctor, every miracle cure. She went to every... Anything you can possibly imagine, all she had left <coughs> was Jesus. She heard that he was a healer. She saw the testimony of the, <coughs> those that he's healed and those that he delivered. All she had left was to believe. And she grabbed a hold of that one little truth, that the yoke that the Lord requires from us is to believe. And she simply said, if I would touch the hem of his garment, I will be whole. If you were here last week or if you weren't, and you know the story, she touched his garment and she was healed. Now I think that's sad. Not that she was healed, but somehow she needed to come to the end of herself first. 
Now, I have to tell you, there's, um, there's, there's truth to that in some, in some ways. Because I believe that God says if we do our part, he'll do his. There are times that we need to do certain things. Example is here. Our responsibility is to come to the Lord with those heavy burdens. To come to the Lord with those weariness and accept his rest. So sometimes we need to come to the end of ourselves before we'll go to him. Sometimes there's that step we need to take toward him so that he can accomplish what he wants to do in us. And I'm going to tell you, life is full of struggles and burdens and wearisome and tired. <coughs> But I had someone say to me the other day, well, I'm giving it to the Lord. And I still, nothing's gotten better. Well, any answer I have for that, no one wants to hear. But I've been there and I've done that. You leave it in the Lord's hands. I read an illustration that said, God, I've given these things to you several times. And I'm still going through them. Why? This is what's real simple. You never let go. It's a difficult thing to do. Just say, I'm going to give it to God and let God be God. I'm not going to worry about it anymore. I'm not going to fret about it anymore. God will meet me where I am. And he will give you rest. The problem is sometimes it's hard for us just to say, okay, God, it's yours and then wait for him to work it out. It doesn't come easy. Because while God may be working it out, we're still limping along in life. We still feel the pains in our knees or our feet or our back. We still feel the struggle and the pressure of not enough funds. We still feel the pain of a son or a daughter or a child who isn't healthy or going astray. We still feel that. But what we need to understand is we need to let God take those things from us and make us whole. Give us rest. I found it even myself. I look at it and I, I said to the Lord, I, well, that's not always easy. There are times in my life it took years to come to that place. What he says is, give me your burdens and I'll give you mine. My burden is light. It simply means believe. Now, we talked about that yoke a little while ago and I want to make something, a quick illustration. What a yoke, it was two, it's a farm tool and they attached two um, oxen to it. But when they wanted to train a young oxen, they took a big, well-trained, older oxen and he went on this side and the younger oxen went on the other side. And what, was, what happened was the majority, if not all of the weight and the work was on the older oxen. But the young oxen followed him every step he took. That's how Jesus' yoke is easy. If we grab a hold of what he wants us to do and have and follow him, every step will be right and easy. Jesus says, are you weary and burdened? Let him take them. He says, come unto me. It's an invitation. Yield to me. He carries our burden. Learn of me. He helps us grow. You need to understand what he says is, come unto me. And he will take them. Peter wrote it this way. Cast your anxiety, your cares on him because he cares for you. Cast your cares on the Lord. He will sustain you, David, in Psalm. Jesus says, come unto me, all of you that are weary and heavy burdened. What he's saying is, it needs to change. But here's where the hard part comes in. Come unto me, and then he says, yield to me. 
what that really is. Take up my yoke. Forget about the things that you've got on your plate already. Take up my yoke. And when you do that, when you walk with me, I'll pull the load. You won't have to. I'll do the hard work. You won't have to. All you need to do is believe. And for me, this was one of the most difficult things I ever learned in my life. I remember it vividly. I went to our Apostle Chuck and I simply said, How do I believe that God will meet me in my finances? And he gave me the worst, best advice I ever got. It was a stupid Nike. Just do it. Just do it. Oh, man. Those of you who know me, I'm pretty... I wanted a five-step formula. Or I wanted, you know, do this, do that, lay this down. Do, just do it. However, while I say that was the worst advice I've ever gotten in my life, I can also say it was the best because I learned to just do it. And when I did, things began to change. Then I looked back and I got mad for a little bit and said, why couldn't I just do that sooner? Because I, I'm an individual, I, the way my father raised me, made me up, I have an awesome responsibility to take care of my home and my family, and do everything I can to take care of that, and people in my care, whatever, I just, I feel that. But it's not supposed to be a burden, it's a privilege. Now when it came to my kids, I understood that. I considered that my wife and I were stewards of the wonderful children God gave us. We would do our best, but ultimately, they were his. And there are times that God took them to the woodshed when I didn't. There are times when God taught them things that I tried to say and say and say, but he taught them in a moment. But what has to happen is we need to yield to him. We need to take up his yoke. Now sometimes it's hard for us. <coughs> because sometimes the burden we hold is right in front of us. Sometimes the burden that is overwhelming us is every something we face every single day. It's hard to grab his yoke where you believe, but believe. All things will work together for good to them that love God. Do you love God? Whatever it is you're going through right now, whatever burden you're carrying, whatever weight, it will work together for good. I like the little illustration on the leaves and the flowers on the sand is that the flowers were made to grow through that stuff. That's exactly what they're for. To us, it looks like a burden. How are they going to grow in there? They can't, nobody tends it. I feel that way about crabgrass and weeds. I, I have decided when it comes to home, I just decided to give that up. I have the greatest lawn in the world. It's all crabgrass. It grows really well, cuts really nice, and it stays there. I decided that I'm just wanting to look I'm going for. And great for me, it just grows. I don't have to plant it. I barely have to water it. It just grows. What God wants us to do is to let him grow up in us. Galatians, Paul says it this way. I have been crucified with Christ. I no longer live, but Christ lives in me. I live the life I live in the body. I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. And the last thing that he tells us is to learn from me. Depending on the translation, it said learn from or learn of. Oftentimes, the reason Christians get discouraged is because they forgot that one little phrase that Christianity is a learning process. It doesn't happen. Instantly. It doesn't happen overnight. It's a process in which we grow. I have three children, two grandchildren, and I want to tell you something that I'm very proud of today. 
They are quite adept at walking. <laughs> That's good. But it didn't start out that way. There were a lot of bumps, a lot of falls. Sometimes they fell on their, their diapers. Sometimes they fell and waddled side to side. Sometimes they face planted. But you know what? They kept getting up, they kept pushing it through, and they learned to walk. And I'm proud to say they all walk pretty good today. <laughs> what we need to do is to learn from him. Now, how do you do that? Now, I, I've said this so much in the last few weeks that it just is not really worth saying. Read his word. Spend time in worship. Fast. Pray. Listen to sermons. And I'm going to give you, I've been adding one that I, I know that people have a hard time with. Are you ready? Mm -hmm. Practice. Silence. I thought it was a great activation they did on that workman's trip. Get up and don't talk. I got to say, that had to be hard for some people. But even more than that, listen to me. When I say practice science, and I believe she meant it as well, she didn't just mean don't talk to anybody. Don't talk to yourself. Psycholinguistics. The, the, we speak an average of 10,000 thoughts a minute. Some more, some less. But that's an average. How can you hear God? How can you listen? How can you obey when there's so much going on up here? You want to learn from Him, you need to read His Word. You need to spend time in worship and communion with Him. And I believe almost almost too much that if you spend time in communion with Him, all those things will just happen. You can't be in his presence and have your faith stirred up. You can't be in his presence and desire more. You can't be in his presence and not learn. But we read his word, we fast, we pray, we listen to sermons. And I have begun in my life over the last few months to practice silence, to just sit there. Say nothing, read nothing, and uh, disconnect. I did it Friday night. I just went upstairs. Mandy was cleaning the house. She had the friends over, and I wanted to get out of her way. I went upstairs, and I just sat in the chair and looked out the window. Didn't say anything. Didn't do anything. And I, I felt really bad because several times Mandy walked by and said, Are you okay? Because <laughs> it's not something. It's easy for me. But when you're silent, you can hear that really small voice. And I'm going to tell you, if you're going to take his yoke, you need to learn of him. Jesus promised us a life, and most people think a religious life is all about. He didn't preach about a burdensome life that ultimately leads to spiritual exhaustion. He preached about rest and peace, a way that is easy, a burden that is light. Doesn't mean we're not going to go through anything, it simply means we have turned it over to him. He'll carry our burdens. He bore them so that we wouldn't have to. It begins in Calvary, 1 Peter 2, 24. says, he himself bore our sins in his body on a tree so that we might die to sins and live for righteousness. You can release your burdens and allow God to set I don't like to argue with scripture. He said, for my yoke is easy 
and my burden is light. Easy means simple and not complicated. But for us, it's not. It's a difficult thing to put our trust in him that way. But he made it easy. All you need to do is believe. Listen to his voice this morning. If you're carrying a heavy burden, 